Praise God, everyone. It's such a good day that God has made for us again to glean and get the neshama, the breath of God, that proceeding word that is coming from his mouth. And yes, our God is speaking throughout, but the question is, have we set our mind to be able to listen in what he's talking to us about? Thank you so much, Pastor George, for the opportunity to be a blessing to the people of God on this Nashama platform. And I believe that each one of us is getting blessed and learning from the things that different speakers are bringing on board. Last time we talked about the power of God's word. And today I want us to talk about how do we study the word of God. And because yes, the word of God is powerful. But again, studying the word of God requires a particular approach, requires a particular technique. And I know most of us are challenged in studying the word of God. If you are like me, for many years I studied the word of God without understanding, without gaining comprehension, without understanding exactly what is it the Bible that is talking about. So today we will study on uh, how do we study the scriptures in a manner that we gain the meaning that is intended from the word of God. My scriptural text is from 2 Timothy 2.15 and the Bible says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of truth. That is talking to us that there is one word that is actually the word of truth. How do you glean the truth of the word of God from the many things that we study from the pages of the Bible? And in matters to do with studying the word of God, there are no shortcuts to studying scripture. Coming into a knowledge of the word of God takes time, it takes effort, it takes consistency, it takes a lifelong process that one can never complete, but if done in the right way, able to transform us and make us to be that which God intended us to become through the scriptures. However, though there are no shortcuts, they are correct and incorrect ways to look upon the word of God. A person can study the word of God incorrectly, reading it to gain the meaning that they desire themselves, being led by our selfish agendas. And that's why most of us are studying the word of God, but the interpretation is different. The people who are cultic in nature, they are actually studying the word of God. They that are actually persecuting others, they're doing that in the word of the Lord, thinking that they are serving God in what they are doing. But the Bible, as much as it's a closed book, is yet a very simple book to them that are open to get the right things out of the word of God. And as we saw in Proverbs chapter number 8 and verse number 8, all the words of my mouth are with righteousness, nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and write to those who find knowledge. So if we study the word of God with an idea of getting and finding knowledge, this word is able to come to us with an understanding and it's simple and it's plain. Some of us study the word of God with a sincerity of knowing the truth, with a hunger for righteousness, with a hunger for godliness, but yet again without the relevant keys to interpreting scripture, thereby ending again in error. For some of us it's through our selfish approach and uh, for some of us it's out of total deception of the same. And this is very clear by 1 Timothy 3, and verse number one, the Bible says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. So people studying the word of God from their own selfish ambitions, from their own interest. The Bible says that these people will be having a form of godliness, but denying its power always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of that truth ever in scriptures ever learning ever studying the word of god but they don't come to the knowledge of the truth remember we are talking about that truth because there is only one truth i hear people saying there are many ways to come to the lord there are no many ways of coming to the lord there are no many ways of coming to know the word of god there is only one way to know the truth and as Jamnas and Jamnas resisted Moses, so do this also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. Now, if that is the case, then how do we study the word of God in a manner that we find the truth that we are looking for? Number one, 
we need to give ourselves to diligent study of it. There is a difference between collecting manna and giving ourselves to the study of the word of God. That diligent study is to perceive, is to comprehend, is to conceptualize. This word goes beyond acquisition of data. It means the acquisition of the right data within the provided disciplines, uh, thereby bringing a conceptualization that helps us apply the word of God and give us the outcome of transformed believers. A person then, when you study the word of God with that kind of diligence, the spirit of God that is still within us is able to take that word and help us to piece it up together and bring uh, the right meaning, then leading us into that truth. And John 16 and 12 is very clear. The Holy Spirit will be able to help us realize that because he will teach us things that Jesus was not able to teach us. Or it's not all connected uh, in the word of God. But the Bible says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth come, he will guide you. So the Holy Spirit guides us in the many things that Jesus would have wanted to say to the disciples. And he was not able or he didn't say it but the holy spirit is able to lead us into that truth so we study diligently uh, separating the collection of manna and bringing that which you have collected piecing it up together to be able to bring a meaning uh, that is originally intended from the scripture number two we receive this word with meekness we receive this word with the desire or allowing it to accomplish that which it was meant to accomplish in our lives the word of god is meant to bring us into salvation the salvation of our spirit the salvation of our soul and the redemption of our bodies but this can only happen if we receive this word with meekness being able and willing to learn and unlearn because there are things we have learned in the wrong way but when we study the word of god diligently then it introduces into us the right way of studying the word of god now number three in understanding the bigger picture if we are going to know how to study the scripture then we need to understand the big picture and what is the big picture of the word of God? The running theme in the Bible is redemption. The key character in the Bible is Jesus Christ. And then you also need to understand that the way the Bible is holistically wired, it introduces us to a recreation and in the beginning with an approach that there was a perfect creation before the ruined creation. Then after the ruin, we see a restorative work. And then after the restorative work, there is a rest. So you have to see it that way. A perfect work, a ruined creation, and then a restorative work, then a rest. And this happened in a period of six days of restoration and the seventh day of our God being able to rest. And the whole scripture is moving to the seventh day, is moving to the rest of God. So all the scriptures lies in Genesis chapter number one, verse number one, two and three. And we see the restoration taking place and all the things are actually moving to the seventh day. That is the whole picture of the Bible. Then we need to come to an understanding that the Bible is dealing with three categories of people, the Jewish nation, the Gentiles and the Christians. When you are able to see that, then progress and come to the point of understanding that again the Bible is divided, is divided into dispensation. There is an age and there is dispensations into it. And in those different dispensations, God is dealing with different mankind who are actually stewards of each and every dispensation. Look at this. It's all about redemption. Redemption in a period of six days. Then on the seventh day, there is a rest. On in between the six or the whole seven days is an age, an age that is divided into dispensations. And God in those dispensations is dealing with different types of people. That helps you to understand scripture. 
It helps you to know what is it that God is saying to the Jewish nation? What is it that he's saying to the Gentiles? What is it that he's saying uh, to the church? Then number four, we need to separate God's wisdom and the earthly wisdom. There are two types of wisdoms. The wisdom of this world, 1 Corinthians 2 and 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. There is the wisdom of this age, and it is under the rulers of this world. And this, the Bible is very clear, that the wisdom of this world makes the cross of Christ to be made of none effect that gospel of suffering that gospel of carrying our own cross the wisdom of this age has made it to be of none in fact and that is very clear in first corinthians chapter number one and verse number 17 for christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with the wisdom of words lest the cross of christ should be made of none effect if we are going to understand the bible we need to separate the wisdom of this world from the wisdom of god and the wisdom of god the bible is very clear that the wisdom of god is that which is a mystery first corinthians chapter number two and verse number seven we speak of the wisdom of god in a mystery it is spoken in a mystery Again, it is ordained before the ages for our glory. And this wisdom was not known at the point of Christ's crucifixion by the rulers of this age. Because if they knew, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It is the wisdom of a predetermined kingdom. It is the wisdom of a continuous salvation of our soul. It is the wisdom of suffering. It is the wisdom of carrying our cross daily. It is the wisdom of dying to the flesh like Jesus Christ died to the flesh. And it is the wisdom of Christ being the only anointed one. So I bring this to a close. Then, if you are going to study the word of God in a manner that is acceptable, you must study it line upon line. It must be line upon line, precept upon precept. Isaiah 28 and verse number 9. Whom shall we teach knowledge and whom will we make understanding, make to understand the message? Those just win from milk, those just drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, a little from here and a little from there. So it must be line upon line, precept upon precept. Number six, it must be comparing scripture or spiritual things with spiritual things. First Corinthians chapter number two, verse number nine and 13. It is very clear. It must be comparing the spiritual things and spiritual things. And being like that wise or that instructed scribe who is able to learn matters to do with the kingdoms of the heaven and is able to bring his treasures from the old and from the new. When you study the word of God that way, it's able to bring in the transformation that God required in our lives as it prepares us to the key purpose of man's creation, which is ruling and reigning. Study it diligently. Understand the big picture. Separate the wisdom of men and the wisdom of God. Let it be line upon line. Let it be comparing spiritual things with spiritual things, and you will be able to get the revelation from the Spirit of God and live in accordance to our calling, awaiting for that blessed day of the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you. May the Holy Spirit reveal the word to you as you study it in the provided uh, structure and uh, way as God would desire it. God bless you.